Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Ferre and I'm a fourth grade teacher in Maryland. Over the years, I've made a lot of videos about creating slides for teaching, especially using Google Slides. And I have to apologize to you all because the way I used to show you was not the best way. In the past few weeks, I've completely changed the way that I make my slideshows and it is so much better. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I create my slides, which I share out to my students on Google Classroom from start to finish. Now I do have to give a big shout out to virtual teaching for forcing me to find this new style of creating slides because I'm sharing slides out to my students through Google Classroom and I'm having them complete assignments on Google Slides. I don't want them to be able to edit pieces of the slide except for text boxes and adding images, but I don't want them to mess up like the template I've already given them. In previous videos, I would create the slides and then I would export them as an image Image, and then I would insert that image into the background and y'all that was so time consuming and I have found a much faster way. So within my Google Drive I'm going to open up a new set of slides by coming over to new and then choosing Google Slides. You can also type in your address bar slides.new and it will automatically open up a new Google Slides presentation. In the past, I would always resize these slides to be eight and a half by 11. So they match the size of a piece of paper in case I needed to print them for any reason. But this go around with virtual teaching, I'm actually keeping them in this presentation format because I feel like it takes up more of the screen on student devices. And so it allows them to see everything bigger when they're working on it. Hopefully that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is actually close out of themes I'm not gonna change the slide size. As you can see, that slide takes up a good chunk of the screen, which is exactly what I want. In order to make the slide so that my students cannot edit the different features like the title and the little outline I'm gonna have, I'm going to edit the slide master. I don't know why it took me so long to figure this out. All I can say is I'm happy I finally did figure it out. I'm gonna come to slide and choose edit master. So within the slide master, you will see all of these different slide types. Now I don't need all of these, so I'm actually going to just delete them. And I'm going to start from scratch with this beginning layout. I like to have just a blank slide, so I'm also going to delete the text boxes. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is insert my rectangle, which I always have, you all know that. So I'm gonna go to shapes, rectangle, Go ahead and click it and then if i right click and come to format options i can choose the exact size so uh, okay let me start by figuring out what size is my actual slide so i'm going to file page setup go to custom okay it's 10 inches by 5.63 inches so i'm going to take off half an inch total on each side so i'm going to make it so nine and a half by 5.13 okay now i'm going to take this rectangle and i'm going to make it centered both vertically and horizontally. There we go. I'm going to have it with a white fill, a black outline, and I'm gonna change the width to, mm, let's see, that's four points. I might make it a little bit thicker, eight points. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna actually duplicate this slide. So I'm using Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring it so it's just a little bit underneath. Oop, not that far and I'm just gonna make it thinner like that, but I'm going to give it a black fill. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I do need to go ahead and edit my background color. So I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna go ahead and type in the hex code for the exact color pink that I like, which is FF2F92. Okay, click okay, click done. All right, then I can go ahead and edit this text. So if I right click, choose edit text, this is usually the title of my lesson or like the lesson number. So maybe lesson one. And then I always do Oswald and I set this up to whatever size. Let's go like 60. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to center it vertically and horizontally and I'm gonna change it to white text. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to add another text box underneath and I wanna make sure that it lines up with each side. 
Okay, so this would be like the essential question. So I might just put type essential question here. <laughs> okay, so I get all that. Oswald, let's go size like 32. That looks good. Center it, center it. And then I usually add in another text box like over on the side. So edit text. Again, I'm just kind of putting these in for now just to show you. Let's go size 24. Yeah, that looks good. Center it both ways. And then I would usually add an image or a GIF or a GIF over on this side. Let me go ahead. All right, so I've just gone to Google, typed in science GIF or GIF, and I'm just gonna scroll. Yes, this is the one that I use. So I'm going to right click, save image as, and sure, I can keep it as that, I don't really care. I'm gonna come back to my slides and I'm going to insert that image from my computer. Cause I do wanna show you all that if you add a GIF or a GIF, it will automatically animate um, even when you do it this way, which I really like. So I'm gonna put that in. That looks pretty good. I might drag this text box over. Okay, that slide's pretty good. I'm now going to duplicate this. So I'm gonna right click, duplicate layout. I'm going to change it to an orange color and maybe this is going to be vocabulary. Okay, um, so here are, oh my gosh, my caps lock is not wanting to work today. There we go, here are some words and definitions you will need to know for today's lesson. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. Okay, you all get the point. I'm just gonna leave this text box as like a placeholder. I'm gonna duplicate this again, and this time I'm gonna choose yellow. Okay, and let's say this time it's going to be, um, what are you wondering? Okay, I'm just gonna like put edit text. You all get the point. I'm just creating these different layouts. So when I'm done creating all of my different slides that I'm going to need for this lesson, which if I need multiple orange slides, again, I can just right click and duplicate it and it's going to create more than one. Just to show you how this is different, I'm gonna choose vocabulary two for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the slide master by clicking the X. You will notice because I only had that first slide inserted, that's all it's showing right now. In order to insert those other slides I've created, I'm gonna come up to this new slide with layout. And if I click the arrow, you will see those different slides that I've created. So I can just click on them in order to insert them in. And there they are. What I love about this is that students will not be able to edit them. So if I click here, the kids can't change the text. They can't change the background. They can't change any of that. Now, if I need to go in and edit this, maybe I made a mistake. I'm just gonna go back to slide, edit master, and maybe I want to put type here. As soon as I close out, you will notice it's already updated on the slide. So what I recommend doing is creating a template for yourself, maybe for each different subject area that you teach. And then whenever it's time to make a lesson, just duplicate that layout and go in and type in the information. That template is going to end up saving you a lot of time. Now let's say there are some elements that I want my students to edit. Now once I've inserted in all of my slides, if there is an element that I want my students to be able to edit, like maybe I want them to actually type on that slide, I can add a text box on top of the slide after I've inserted it. So let me show you that. I'm gonna go back to Slide Master and maybe on this slide I'm gonna say, type your questions below. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit skinnier and I'm gonna delete this text box because I want students to actually type in that area. I'm gonna close out of the Slide Master. Now I'm going to insert a text box on top of here and it would say type here. Then when my students open up this slide, they can't change the title, they can't change the background, but they will be able to click in that text box and be able to type their answer. So this is a super fast way to kind of lock your background, if you will, so that students are not able to manipulate things. In my previous video, I showed you how I created Nearpod lessons within Google Slides. So if you want to go back and watch that video, you can, but I'm actually going to open up 
a set of slides that I had already edited with Nearpod Elements, just so I can show you exactly what I do after that. So you will notice this set of slides has some Nearpod Elements already added in. That is what I use for the Nearpod lesson. However, I do want to post these slides on Google Classroom for my students to number one, look back on, and number two, to complete their independent work. So I actually will have two different copies of the slides, one copy for Nearpod and then one copy for posting on Google Classroom. So I usually make the Nearpod version first, which I showed in that last video. So you can go back and watch that if you want to know how I did it. But once I have created the Nearpod lesson, I'm just going to make a copy of these slides and I want the entire presentation. So I just went to file, make a copy, entire presentation, and I might put example science lesson GC to represent Google Classroom. So I know that those are the Google Classroom slides. I'm gonna click OK, and it's going to generate an exact copy of what I already had created. Because this set of slides is going on Google Classroom, my students don't need those interactive Nearpod elements. Those were just for the Nearpod lesson. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the slides with Nearpod. So this one, for example, I don't need. I can just hit delete. I can delete that. I can delete that. Um, I can delete that and that and that and that. Now I had inserted a video through Nearpod. If I want my students to have access to that video, I can always add in a blank slide and then I can insert in the video. So if it was something from YouTube, I can just search and insert it in that way. So my students can still access and watch the video. But for now, I'm just going to click cancel. Now in the Nearpod lesson, my last slide told students to go to Google Classroom in order to complete their independent work. So I don't need that slide in this set of slides because these are the slides my students are going to look at. So I'm going to delete that slide and instead I'm going to insert a separate one that I created in my slide master that is their actual independent practice. Just like before, because I want students to actually type on this slide, I'm going to add text boxes on top. So I'm just going to create the text box like this, type here, and then I can duplicate this using Command D or Control D, drag it over, there we go. So now when I post these slides on Google Classroom, my students will be able to look back at the vocabulary, the questions that we discussed, the images that I put in, the diagrams that I had, and then they are gonna complete that final slide and I added the text boxes so that they can edit it. Now in terms of posting this on Google Classroom, let me show you what that looks like. So I'm within my little sample Google Classroom that I always use to show you all things. I'm going to come over to Classwork and I'm going to create an assignment. Now, if these are slides that don't have anything for my students to complete, they're just slides I want my students to reference, I can actually post it as a material. But because this set of slides has an assignment that I want my students to complete, I need to make sure I create it as an assignment. So I'm just calling this example science lesson. And then I would put my instructions. I've been keeping my instructions super simple. So it might say, open the example science lesson slides, complete the last slide, purple background, and then turn in this assignment. I literally keep it that simple because let's be honest, the kids don't read the directions most of the time anyway, but I want it to be just a simple step-by-step -step process. So now I'm gonna click on add, choose Google Drive. And because I just recently edited this file, it will show up under recent. Oh, there are some pictures from my bridal shower. <laughs> and this is that one that I just created. So I'm gonna click insert. Now I want to make sure I change this drop down to make a copy for each student. That is going to automatically generate a new copy so that each student can edit their own slide and it's not going to mess up any other student's work and it's not going to mess up my original file. Then again, I can choose, you know, the points, the due date, the topic, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to click assign. So now that I have that example science lesson, if I click on it, there is a set of slides. The student view looks very similar. They will open up the slides, edit the last slide, and then turn it in on Google Classroom.
So that is it. That's how I'm creating all of my slideshows that I use to teach and that I share with my students. I go into the slide master, I create all of the slides, I then add in the interactive Nearpod elements, which I discussed in my last video. I make a copy of those slides, delete the Nearpod elements, add in any interactive text boxes that I want my students to actually edit, post on Google Classroom, and that's it. For me, this system has been working really well. I lead the actual lesson through Nearpod, so it's interactive and it's engaging for students, but then I post the slides for my students to look back on at their own pace and to complete the assignments. If this video was helpful for you, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and share it out to your teacher friends who might also enjoy it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.